So today we're talking about uh, specifically the math processing task, but a little overview of a lot of different math tasks that are available in Pebble. So we're going to talk about the math processing. It's in the test battery under math proc. And this is a test that's been around since um, at least the 80s uh, to measure speeded math um, abilities for simple problems. Uh, and it appeared originally, I think, in the UTC Tri-Services test battery for the US military. Um, and it still appears in the, the batteries that, have, that that has turned into. Um, and it's in Pebble, and it's implemented like the one in, in that um, battery. And it's been used by a, a number of papers. There's a few other math tests as well. There's one called math test. And this is um, lets you specify the specific problems you want to do. And, and if you use the default set, some of them can be very difficult, like um, dividing th two four-digit numbers by one another and things like that. And so this gives you a little more flexibility if you just want to test math abilities rather than speeded um, math assessment. Uh, there's also this plus minus test. This is, um, you know, simpler where you're adding um, one number um, plus or minus to another number and giving responses. Um, that's more probably of a working memory um, working memory executive function task inspired by Miyake et al.'s executive function tasks. Uh, there's, let's see, there's also one called the two column addition, two call add. So this, you have to add three two digit, digit numbers together. I think this also comes from the UTC uh, performance assessment battery as well. And it's, it's a little different than the math processing task and of course, um, let's see, there's also tasks uh, like the, um, I guess there's a task, what, the pass at, uh, paste audio serial edition task. Um, this is really quite simple where you continue to have to add a number together in sort of a running string. And then maybe the last one uh, is the operation span task, uh, which involves a working memory task inter with um, math problems interleaved with um, memory for a sequence of letters. So there's quite a lot of different <coughs> number processing, math processing tasks. Oh, I guess within the um, scales, we also have an implementation of right here, we have an implementation of the Berlin numeracy task, which is uh, sort of a four problem math pr test that it involves sort of more complex thinking. Um, so we're going to focus today on math proc, the math processing test, and it's been used on a number of studies. If we look up on Google Scholar, uh, it's cited several different times. Um, not all of these are actual Pebble um, versions, but here's one that used Pebble about looking at uh, blood oxygen level. And there's one about critical flicker uh, as predicting um, uh, cognitive function and associating with oxygen use. So um, people have used this several times to link to physiological or um, underpinnings of cognitive function. And in fact, one paper I was involved with uh, looked at predictors of um, genetic predictors of this. And so this involved a assessment of South Americans on two different um, genotype, um, two different pairs of genotype groups. So um, BDNF and COMT. Um, have different genotype groups, and both of them have, uh, when you compare them, you see that one, um, one genotype does better than the other genotype, significantly better or marginally better at this math processing task. 
So let's look at the math processing task. It's basically um, a, a graded uh, difficulty task where you get between one and five numbers and you have to add them up and give the answer. And instead of computing the answer, you determine whether the answer is greater or less than five. So all the answers are gonna be between by default one and nine without five as one of the answers. And so we can then look at um, how fast you can make that as a, as a function of how many problems there are, or how complex it is, maybe how many minuses there are in there and things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we look at math processing, the first thing we want to check out are the parameters, the ways you can um, adapt this task to your own needs. So by default, um, you do a three minute block for each different problem size. And um, you can specify whether you want to do one length one, two, three, four, or five. Length one is kind of, is by default off, but this one might be an interesting control because it's just a, now this is just a, is your number greater or less than five? Um, it's a single number judgment. Um, and you can do length one, two, three, four, five. Here I have customized this so, like the default just does length two, three, and four, but I've customized it so it does one, two, and five. And I also have a block time, which by default is three minutes or 180 seconds. So I've shortened that to 30 seconds so that I can do this during uh, the video without being too boring. So you have to do this problem and answer less than or greater than five. And you have a deadline for each one. And these deadlines work pretty well for um, you know, normal educated uh, populations if you're using children or maybe if you're using elderly or a, um, a clinical population, you might want to make some of these larger because they may have trouble, more trouble in you and you want to give them more time. But um, these I think are the ones used in the Perez description and they're pretty reasonable. You usually can answer this and you'll see that, that I'm probably going to be, um, you know, 90, 80 to 90% um, able to give the right answer within these times. You can specify the smallest and the largest value. I don't, um, you know, it doesn't, I don't know if how much you want to change this. I suppose you could make it between four and six, so all of the answers are between four and six. I forget exactly the algorithm used to create these problems, but it's done randomly, so um, if you restrict the range too much, you might get some weird problems. So you, if you want to play with this, you can, but you should test it. Uh, you can determine whether you want to give correct or incorrect feedback after each one. Um, and by default, it's on, but you can turn that off. And you can also randomize the order of the blocks. So uh, by default, it will go um, in order of the length. So first the shorter and then move to the longer, but that actually um, maybe leads to practice effects so people get better and they're be able to handle the large ones or maybe leads to fatigue and so by the time they get to length five they they would have been able to do it first but they can't do it last so you may want to use randomiz randomization so you can counterbalance that out but let's these are a, a parameters that we can run through in just a couple minutes there should this should be about 90 seconds of testing it's not going to be very reliable because we're, we're not going to get very many trials at each length, but um, for a demo, it's reasonable. So let's try this. And here's instructions. No problem, we'll ever have five. Press on the key to continue. <coughs> you can see that it says it will last for three minutes. I've changed that in the parameter settings, but if you want to change that, you should also change it in the instructions. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, so there's three pages of instructions, and let's get started. Block one, the problems in this block will have one numbers. You have a deadline of 1.5 seconds to solve each one. Good luck, press any key to begin. So we have six is greater than five, nine is greater than five. So I'm just hitting left and right, the left and right shift key um, in each of these, oh, I made one error. 
in each of these cases based on whether it's greater than or less than five. And again, this is maybe more like a control condition because there's no math involved, but it's uh, maybe a reasonable baseline. You can compare the best case scenario if there's no math involved, what the timing and accuracy would be. And you can see how that's impacted by more complicated problems. <coughs> okay, now we're gonna do two numbers. So, um, to do well in this, you actually, I've learned you don't have to actually solve the problem. Um, like, for many things, it's obvious as if it's going to be greater or less than 5. Like, if it's a number, if you have a number that's greater than 5 and it's added, it's always going to be greater than 5. And so, um, many times, um, the math um, is, you don't have to solve it to, to actually... Um, answer it correctly. And so that might be an interesting thing to look at if there are um, qualitative predictors of whether, of speed versus ones that you actually have to solve it. So for an exam example, if you have two numbers less than five and you add them together, then you, you don't know if it's going to be less than or greater than five and you sort of have to solve it. But if you have two numbers, um, if you have one number greater than five and then there's just an addition, you can say it's greater than five without having to sort of solve it. And I bet you that would actually predict performance. And s similarly with subtraction, if you subtract a number less than five um, from a number less than five, another number, it's got to be less than five. All right, now we're going to do a tough one, five problems. Five, three, okay. Okay, that was incorrect. And um, I, I am feeling the pressure of timing here. So I don't, I'm trying to basically get it right, but um, I'm actually guessing frequently. Okay, so that's it for this. I had three 30 second blocks. By default, it would be three minutes. You could probably make it longer and you probably would get uh, more reliability. Um, so let's look at what the data looks like. Um, we'll open the data folder and I just ran subject 15. So we get two files here for each subject. One is a report that's only generated at the very end. So if for some reason they don't make it at the very end, it won't um, be complete. So um, here is, uh, I have length one, two, and five, and I did 23, 19, and seven. Uh, I made 22, 16, and seven correct. Uh, I made one, three, and one errors. And in this case, there were two, two slow errors, but no other two slow errors. And that means there was one error that it was committed meaning I'm, I gave the wrong answer rather than not making a response in time. Overall accuracy, 95, 84, 85, or 86. Mean response time goes up, uh, and me median response time goes up as well. Let's see, I did this yesterday too, so let's see how consistent my results are across two runs of this. So 23 this time, 24 last time. 19, 17, 7, 6. So the timing is about, is fairly consistent, even within a 30 second period. Total correct, 22, 15, 5, or 23, 15, 5, 22, 16, 6. Um, errors here, these were all two slow errors, no committed errors. 95% accuracy, or 95.8 versus 95.6. 88 versus 84, 83 versus 85. So it's fairly consistent. This was a little faster for the small ones, but a little slower for the longer ones. So um, this would be a, a good way to just get a good summary statistic for individuals, maybe in a clinical setting where you just want that one number, and the Pebble system does that for you. But you, but you might want to analyze the data yourself. And so the data um, for every trial are going to be in this file, this CSV file. And you can see every um, 
response has its own row in this uh, data set. From subject number to trial feedback just means that feedback was given on every trial. This is the value um, that was uh, uh, was the answer to the problem. And in fact, uh, sum is the same as value. I think what hap happens is this is the value the algorithm looks for, and this is what it produces. So this is a nice check that it's actually doing it right. Um, this is the stimulus, and in, in a single um, pr uh, digit problem, that's going to be the same. But now you have the stimulus, and it sort of mashes them together with this pipe. So this was 8 minus 2. This is 2 plus 2. 8 plus negative 7, and so on. So you can then analyze the specific problems uh, if you'd like to see if there are some things that lead to greater response time or lesser response time. This tells you if it was correct. This tells you if it was too slow. Um, this is the absolute time. Um, this is in a counter in milliseconds from when the program first began. And it tells you when that, um, I think when the either the tr response was made or the data was recorded. And so it gives you a, a recording of sort of when that happened, maybe so you, you could sync it with a um, eye movement or something like that. <coughs> Finally, we have response time, the response time for each trial. And you can see that, um, well, when I failed, the response time is the timeout. Here's one where I did not make a response. When I failed to make the response in time. But um, there's a ver variation of response times and they get clearly slower as you get more complex problems. Okay, so um, I said that maybe you'd want to change the instructions. To change the instructions, you select this and instead of hitting run, you go to translate test and every single string used for feedback and instruction appears here. And so probably you'd want to, um, if you change something in the settings, you might want to change this to make it match. So this might be, change this to 30 seconds. So you could say 30 seconds each and you know, you might change it in here, or maybe you want more instructions or fewer instructions. Um, and any one of these you can change. Now, um, so if I save this, it, it now would, that text would appear. Um, if I were, if I wanted to um, translate, I can change the language here. I think this should work. And now you can see I've got a Spanish version, and it should copy every one of these over. And then um, I've edited this already, so all, by default, when you make a new translation, it's going to use the English translation, uh, just so that if you fail to um, translate something, at least there'll be something there. And you can see here I've already translated this from correct to correcto. That's the extent of my Spanish knowledge, though, so um, I'm not going to be able to do any more translations of this. And so this is a really easy way for at least most Latin uh, languages to do the translation. For um, You may have more trouble if you're trying to translate into something with a lot of non-Latin characters. And how this works is it um, saves, it saves this, this to... A CSV file. So many times, see, we have a Spanish one here now, and it has sort of a key text um, comparison. And you could open this up in a spreadsheet and translate it if it's easier to do in your language of choice to give the translations that way. All right, so I think that's that covers the Pebble math processing task and um, gives you a flavor for some of the other math t tasks that are implemented and available in Pebble. And from what I can tell, no one has actually 
um, compared and correlated performance on these several different tasks. And that would be a really interesting project to see um, how reliable they are and how intercorrelated they are if these are tapping into different aspects of mathematical ability or if they are sort of tapping into similar aspects or how distinct are they across people. So anyway, the, that's the Pebble Math task, and you can download this at pebble.sourceforge.net.